Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my ex have Father's Day with our kids so her husband can celebrate with them? Ex and I divorced 11 years ago. We have two teens ages 14 and 13. Kids live primarily with me because when she left, it was to be with her current husband who lived in another town. I remained primary custodian because I wasn't the moving parent. She was, which was causing the upheaval. Anyway, they see the kids every other weekend, extended periods during summer, and for every other holiday. Ex and her husband have three kids together. Ex has always asked that we alternate Father's Day, since the kids have known him most of their lives and because they have siblings through him, it is important to celebrate the day as a family sometimes. I always said no, because they are my kids and I want to see them Father's Day. This year seems to be the year pissing them off most, because the kids are choosing to not spend extended period of the summer with them, and she thinks it's more important than ever for them to have that family time, for those memories to be made with their family. She and her husband have been texting me all morning with their annoyance at my decision, and I even had her family on my case about it. It's weighed me down enough, and I have been called an a-hole enough that I have to ask, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. You're their father. And your ex thinks you're somehow the a-hole for wanting to spend the Father's Day with your own children? 100% not a a-hole. Yeah, because her husband has been a good father figure in their lives, and he is the father of their siblings. I don't fully believe it, but the doubt is there because this has been a constant in my year for about two months now. Sounds like she's putting her husband before her kids. Rude. She already did that when she abandoned them for him 11 years ago. Not a hole. Hell, most paperwork nowadays already has it pre-printed that the kids will spend Father's Day with their father and Mother's Day with their mother. Remind them that Father's Day is not a family holiday. It's about celebrating their father. And since he's not their father, they won't be spending it with them. If this pisses her off, so be it. Her pissiness is not your problem. Came here to say exactly this. It's standard for obvious reasons. OB, Father's Day is your holiday. Mother's Day is hers. Full stop. Not today, Hall. Info. What do the kids want? If they're choosing not to spend the summer with mom and stepdad, I think we can guess what they want. Info. According to the cost of the agreement, where are they supposed to be this day? With me. Same as she gets Mother's Day regardless of whether it's her actual weekend or not. Info. Do your kids see their stepfather as a father that they want to celebrate Father's Day with? Have you asked if they want to spend a day with him? In general, I would say not today, Hall, since you are their biological father. With the caveat that if your kids want to spend the day with him, that should be respected, especially as they are getting older. From your post, it kind of sounds like your ex and her husband want to play perfect family, and you are under no obligation to help them do so. However, your kids are at an age where their opinion slash wants as they apply to these things should take priority regardless of your personal opinion, assuming no abuse slash neglect slash safety issues slash etc. And that it isn't going to create issues with legal custody type stuff. Otherwise, they may start to resent you. They don't see him as a father figure at all. He technically is in that he has been in their lives since they were very young. And he has been acting as a paternal figure to them while they are there. But the kids do not consider him their father figure, and that actually became a point of contention a couple of years ago, because they went to an event with them the weekend before Father's Day a couple of years ago, and they made me something and not him. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my adult daughter the truth about why I wasn't in her life? Recently, I got back in contact with my adult daughter, Maddie, after having had nothing to do with her since her birth. She's 25 now. But honestly, I wasn't around from her birth all the way through when her mother died a couple years ago. Now, I know I'm not a perfect person here. I've done some bad things. But in this case, I don't think I was the bad guy. Maddie's mother and I dated for about a year after I graduated high school in 95, while I was just in college. I'll be honest, her mother was a rebound girl. Never thought it would be a long-term relationship or anything. We became close and did couple things, but I always made certain to use protection didn't want kids at that stage in my life, and thought I'd made it clear to Maddie's mother. After coming back from family vacation one summer, I'm surprised to find that her apartment was empty, and she's dropped off the face of the earth. Poof. Gone. Over the past years, I often wondered what happened, but any attempts at searching for Maddie's mother failed. A couple months ago, I got a visitor out of the blue, and after some awkward moments, 
Maddie introduced herself as my daughter. She wanted to know her dad, but at the same time, I felt this hostility there. She was angry, rightly so, at me for not being in her life. But I got the impression this was a well, I can say a met the bastard type of thing. She told me how her mother had died a couple years prior, only after finally telling her my full name and to go looking for me. It had taken her that long to finally track me down. She wanted to know everything I'd been doing to that point, while I still found it hard to believe. Eventually, she asked why I had never been in her life, and I told her two reasons. One, I didn't know you existed, and two, your mom completely vanished on me. She didn't believe this and scoffed, but telling her my own story what happened seemed to mesh up with some things her own mom had told her. This has created a problem. Maddie practically hates her mother for what she did. She accepts that I didn't even know she existed and couldn't find her, so she can't fault me for that. However, she worshipped her mom, and now she's finding out that not only did her mom lie to her about the reason I wasn't around, but now she even questions about her own birth. Was it some stunt by her mother to force me to stay around? We talk from time to time, but her mom has gone from being respected to that lying witch, among other things. I genuinely feel bad about this and wonder if I was the a-hole for telling the truth and destroying whatever memories Maddie had about her mother. So, am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. She deserved the truth. But I don't know why she thinks her mom got pregnant to keep you around if she ghosted you like that without ever telling you. It sounds a lot more like mom wanted a baby and didn't really want dad in the picture. Or else got pregnant by accident and left because she didn't want to deal with co-parenting. Or maybe she thought she was respecting the OP not wanting kids yet and thought she was doing him a favor taking off and not involving him in the baby's life. Info. It doesn't make sense that this was a stunt to get you to stick around, as she didn't tell you she was pregnant. Is there a reason that you both rejected the most obvious answer? Your ex took you at your word that you didn't want a kid, accidentally got pregnant, was unwilling to have a termination or give the baby up, and decided to move on so you wouldn't have to be involved? I think this is not great behavior, but it's hardly the act of a monster. More like a confused young woman who wants her baby without dragging you into fatherhood. I had more information in the first post of this, but it exceeded the 3000 character limit, so I fully expected the info questions. To answer your question, I had made it clear when we started dating that I was hurting. I'd experienced a very bad breakup of my high school sweetheart, and though we talked about it, I specifically told her that I felt that I wasn't ready, being just 19, yes, I failed 8th grade, to have kids. She would sometimes joke that, well, she wanted a child, but respected my feelings on the matter. We'd taken a break around the time my family and I went on vacation, and during that time, I'd largely grown over the relationship. Sure, it was nice and all, but after some serious soul-searching, I'd realized that I didn't love her, and I just loved the things we did together, both physical and otherwise. Today, I suppose you'd call her an FWB, but at the time I didn't know that term, being rather innocent about many things. Also, I don't know if this is worth noting, but she was 35. So yeah, I was a young guy with an older woman, and was loving most every minute of it. The fact that she was 35 to year 19 really should have been in your original post. Also, please do not take me wrong, but have you had a paternity test just to make sure? I have, and it's been confirmed. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my sister stay with me after how she's treated my girlfriend? My girlfriend, 30 female, is currently four and a half months pregnant and we're living together. My ex-wife, 32 female, and I, 30 male, just barely finalized our divorce. It was a pretty messy ending. She had an affair and we separated. Around that time, I spent more time with a close friend of mine, now my girlfriend, who I've known for years. Months later, I realized we had feelings and pursued a relationship. When I filed for divorce, my ex spun the store and flipped it on me. No one in my family believed her, except for my sister, 28 female. And that was due to them being best friends. Throughout the whole ordeal, my sister took my ex's side, wouldn't stop bothering me about working things out with my ex and she's given me a chance after what I did to her. She was even more vicious to my girlfriend for absolutely no reason attacking her on social media, calling her a homewrecker. Myself and my family had to talk to her many times and I cut contact for a while. Then when we found out she was pregnant, my sister's first reaction was, congrats on your affair, baby. 
She texted that to me from a different number because I have her blocked and knew it was her. A week ago, my mom told me my sister wanted to speak to me. She apologized for everything, admitted she was completely immature and coming from a place of anger towards me because she's been with my ex as a support, has been her shoulder to cry on, so she felt protective of her. During the same discussion, my sister mentioned needing some place to stay. So not only was she hoping we could make amends, but also wanted to know if it was possible to stay at our place. Suddenly, her apology didn't seem too sincere to me, and I said no. Especially not with how she treated my girlfriend. My mom is urging me to do this because my sister needs some place to stay, and it could be a way for her and my girlfriend to get to know each other better. And that I can't blame my sister for her reaction when she was just believing my ex's lies. My sister is begging me to help her out and promises she'll be courteous to my girlfriend. My girlfriend thinks if I trust my sister, then she'll go along with what I think is best. But honestly, I don't and wouldn't want to put my girlfriend in that position. Since I've doubled down on my decision, everyone thinks I'm being too hard on her for believing someone else's lies and now refusing to help her. I feel like suddenly I'm the only one sane here since everyone seems to be bothered by this, especially my sister won't let it go. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments, not Dehal. She should have believed her brother over some witch that cheated on you. Like you, I wouldn't put, if I was a guy, my pregnant girlfriend in that situation. Stress can be bad for a baby. That's my concern. Exactly. I tell her you're willing to start talking with her again, but not the moving in portion. If she doesn't accept that, then you do know she was only apologizing to get a place to stay. Info. And she can't stay with your mom because... My mom's a couple hour drive away. Her job is here. But also, she wants us to make amends. So that's a big reason why she's pushing it. Not day Hall. Tell your family that this rift between you and your sister didn't happen overnight. And it won't be repaired overnight. Someone posted about a public apology in social media. I think that is a great starting point. And it will take time and baby steps for her to prove herself to you and your girlfriend. I don't think that's fair to you or your girlfriend to ask you to have your sister move in, no matter how temporary it's supposed to be. This is your first baby, a new experience, and you and your girlfriend should be able to experience it in any way you see fit. Wait till her libido goes into overdrive. And you can't do that with your sister in your back pocket. Good luck and congratulations. Then think about the public apology. Feel that something necessary regardless of whether or not that's a start to her making amends for what she did to my girlfriend. Forgiveness will be up to my girlfriend since she was the one mostly out through the ringer. I agree though. This is a time for us to spend together and grow as a family without any house guests. Oh, believe me, I've noticed. And thank you. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my kid's stepmother she doesn't get to make rules for my home in front of my former in-laws? I share two sons, 11 male and 7 male, with my ex. He left me for his wife three years ago. They got married right after the divorce. I mention this because there are some tensions present due to this and also due to the fact my former in-laws and I got along so well and have not been welcoming towards X's new wife. So anyway, X and his wife put the boys in football and church thing on their time. X actually signed them up for all the time, but neither boy likes those activities. X says in his house they must do them. I say fine, but they won't do them with me. X's wife is the one with the biggest issue with my decision. She is very religious and believes boys should play sports and attend church. About a week ago, my oldest was picking up a certificate from one of his chosen extracurriculars, and me, X, and his wife were there while X's parents and sister were outside waiting to celebrate. X's wife starts telling the boys that they need to do the church thing that Saturday afternoon whether they like it or not, which was my parenting time, not X's, and that they need to sign up for some other stuff for football which also fell in my parenting time. When we go outside, without the boys, they were with X. I told her she did not get to make rules or demands in my home, and she better not do that again the way she did. X's family backs me up and says she's not their parent, etc. She gets super pissed at me for doing that around them. And then when my ex finds out, she tells me I'm in Nahal and should have waited and discussed it after. I told him I only care about the boys not hearing and that he needs to nip the crap in the butt if he doesn't want stuff like that to happen again. She told me I made it even harder for their family to get along now and I should be ashamed. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. It's your home and something the kids don't even want to do. 
Like, I could understand if she was trying to get you to take them to a doctor's appointment or something. But just to some BS that only she gives a crap about? Nah, she can stuff it. Plus, she did it in front of the in-laws, so it should be dealt with in the same manner. She needs to butt the hell out of parenting those kids. She's not a parent and has zero rights in this matter. Not they Hall. They obviously don't have any boundaries if they were okay with cheating and starting marriage over your misery. It's not surprising that she feels entitled to overstep your parenting as well. I'm just wondering, what kind of a religious person is okay with stealing another woman's husband though? The kind who believes she saved him from the big bad atheist who is only going to damn him when he dies. And I know this because she has tried to interfere when X asked me to get the boys baptized and I said no. Because I don't consent to that stuff. She is very religious and believes boys should play sports and attend church. I don't care. She's not their mother. Football is dangerous and I don't agree with religious training of children. I'd probably already be in court dealing with this. How dare she order your kids around, much less in front of you. Edited to add. Perpy, it is American football which was the sport I'm referencing. X's family backs me up and say she's not their parent, etc. They're correct. They have every right to not like a woman that targeted a married man, per your comments.